Well, good morning, Greenway. I'm going to assume that everybody is here this morning because they want to be here, right? Now, assuming that you want to be here also makes the assumption that you don't want to leave the same because that kind of defeats the point of being here, right? You want to be changed. And it starts right here. It starts in the heart. It starts where you allow the Holy Spirit to indwell in you. And that starts with our worship. So please stand with me as we sing, Come Thou Fount, Come Thou King. Please be seated for a moment. Good morning to everybody. Great to have you here on this. I mean, an absolutely astounding, beautiful day. Marsha has something. Marsha said if she wasn't speaking on Sunday morning, it just wouldn't be the same. You've had a lot going on. Come on. We're good with it. Good morning. 
I just wanted to give you a quick update about this past Wednesday night. We started our new Wednesday night programs, and we've got Awana for kindergarten through sixth graders and Venture for seventh through twelfth graders. And we had about 20 kids come for Awanas and had an absolute blast. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really exciting. And I have realized that I've talked about Awana and we've talked about Venture, but we haven't really told you exactly like what that is. Just to kind of give you an idea, Awana stands for Approved Workmen Are Not Ashamed. And it is all about discipleship. And our Venture Youth Program is all about discipleship. So they are memorizing scripture. We are in the word. We are, everything that we're doing is centered around Jesus Christ. And the, you know, just learning more about him worshiping him and equipping ourselves to be able to go into our schools among our friends and be a light for others to see. So that is our goal. And um, I wanted to let you know too, because we've had, we've got 14 right now, third through sixth graders all together. And each week they come in and they are prepared to say their sections is what they're called, where they, um, share the verses that they've memorized and they earn these Awana bucks, these little dollars. And we have a brand new Awana store. You'll have to check it out in the gym over there if you haven't already. But the kids go in there and they see all these different things that they can earn their little money to, you know, to earn all these other you know, fun things. And they are so excited. So I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of kids come this coming Wednesday and they're going to have all these verses memorized and want to say them. And we need some ears to listen to them. So if that is something that you would be interested in doing or willing to give up some of your Wednesday evening time, we would greatly appreciate it. So that is a need that we have. And then another large need that we have is we've got some workers with children, and those children are too young to be in our WANA program, but they need someone to love on them and play with them and have a good time with them. Right now we've just got a two-year-old, but both her, her dad is a youth worker, He's a small group leader in youth, and then her mom is a teacher. So if that is another way that you could serve, it is, it's probably the biggest need that we have right now. So please reach out to me after church, or Sally, give everybody a big wave. You can see Sally after church, too. If you are able to help in any of these areas, we would greatly appreciate it. Because God, God is moving, and he's doing some big things. So if you want to be a part of that, we'd love to have you. Thank you. It's an amazing program, and it's amazing that we have so many people that have a heart to serve in there and to see kids learn, to grow, to understand, to learn God's Word, but then to it to be imparted in them, as we've said in, in, in the book of James. A couple more things really quick, and that was really at the top of my list right there, Awana and Venture, but we need to be praying for several folks, Linda Ives, who's going to be going in for a PET scan this coming week uh, to see if her cancer is still in remission for June south, and she has surgery on the 13th of uh, October uh, for uh, Terry Julian also as he's uh, struggling. Brittany uh, Janice Moose's daughter who's had colon surgery uh, and then crazy app people we need to be we need to be praying for those folks who end up in duck ponds after a ball game uh, that's 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 I understand it. I was young once myself I guess I don't think I ended up in a pond except for a couple of times what an amazing game that was terrific and fantastic I gotta say that for a thing uh, Wednesday's parables don't forget, 6 o'clock in our gathering room over here. We've been going through the parables. It's fantastic. We're going to be back there again this week. And lastly, since I am pastor, I get to do this. Unfortunately, about a year and a half ago, and I'll say unfortunately for the health, my mom and dad moved here uh, back, uh, from Arizona because of health issues. But to have them here is amazing. To have them here in our lives and our kids be able to run up here and see them, it's, it's nothing we've had for years and years and years. Even living in Africa and other places, it's so far away from them. Today's their 68th. Happy. Enough being choked up. Let us lift our voices to the Lord. Father, we thank you so much for being here today. We thank you for the many, many blessings that you just shower upon us. Father, we thank you that we can reach out to you. We can lift up our hearts and our, 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 
our prayers to you and you hear them, you are a God who cares. You love, you're merciful, you're grace-filled, you care about your creation, Father. We know that from the, the activities, from the actions, from your promises. We're so grateful for that. Today, Father, we come here as a collected body. We come here as a community of believers. We lift up our voices this morning to praise you. You are our Father. You are our sustainer. You are the one that cares and loves us and can do something about it. Father, we put ourselves, our lives, our fortunes, our everything in your hands because only you are worthy. We are here to worship you, Father, in Christ. You please stand in honor and reverence of the reading of God's Word. This is a reading from Psalm 23, 33, verses 4 and 5, 16 to 22. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes his great by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Let's continue to gather in worship.
Jesus, in order for you to respond to us, we have to initiate. We know that you knock at the door, Lord, but it is incumbent on us to open it because you never force yourself upon us. You're always there. You're always present. You're always seeking us, but we have to respond. Part of responding to you, Lord, is through our giving. We give in many different ways. We give by our uh, talents, uh, the skill sets that you have given each and every one of us, special abilities that we can use for your purpose. And Lord, you've given us wealth. You've given us wealth beyond measure. Lord, it's time for us to give that back. To grow your church, to grow your kingdom. It takes talents, it takes skills, and it also takes financial means. So Lord, as we give our tithes and offerings this morning, one, we want to do so with a, a joyful and a, a, a cheerful heart but we also want to give with a sense of responsibility to this local congregation so that you can use these gifts to further your kingdom beyond these walls and into the world beyond. Make us so, Lord, and please bless these gifts. We ask these things in your name. Amen.
a reading from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 13. The prophet writes, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. We invite you to stand as we continue in worship. Boy, the Lord has outdone the music today. Wow. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, congregation. I hear your voices. We're in unison. We're in one. We lift up our voices to the Lord. He hears us. We will trust Him. 
We will trust Him. Man, with all the things that are going on in the world, that's what we need. Is we need trust. Ups and downs, uh, economically, pandemics, I don't, you know, <laughs> ball games, I don't know, whatever. Ups and downs. But you know what? Our Father is steadfast and true in the important things. You know what I do? I end up chasing some of the things that are not, you know, they, they get off the, the, the tangent. I mean, they get out there a little bit, and, and we start worrying about things in our lives. We start, um, you know, chasing after good things in our lives that, that we, we feel that they're good and we want to hold on to. And God sometimes severs. He severs. Sometimes he, he reorganizes our thinking. Re, sometimes he, and we want that, don't we? I mean, like Matt, you said it. We come here, we, we want to be changed. We come here for a reason. If we come here to do the same thing week in, week out, get the same feeling, get the same understanding, get the same comprehension, walk out the doors into the same person, we're not being renewed, transformed, the renewing of our mind. And that's what God asks from us. I'm going to tell a quick story I've told before. A friend of mine, Andy, when I had my steel business in Colorado, I'd start a rebar and, uh, company, and, uh, and it, we did well, and it was fun. You know, I mean, I worked with a bunch of great guys. I mean, it was just, it was really fun. And some, a friend of mine called me. I used to work with him on various projects around the country. His name was Andy, and he called me up, and he said, Daryl, he said, I've started my own steel company. I said, man, good on you, Andy. That's great. And he goes, yeah. He goes, I'm sick and tired of eating hamburger. I want to eat steak. And I said, well, you better shoot for a good cut of roast. <laughs> That's all I can tell you, man. I mean, take the ups and downs out of life, dude. I mean, don't expect it to always be. I can't, I don't like emotional roller coasters. And you know what? My father in heaven, when I trust him, when I put my faith in him, no matter what comes my way, he helps. What does he say? Lower the mountains, fill in the valleys. Man, I love that. Father, we love you, and we come here today because we honor you. We want to lift up our voices to you, but right now, Father, it's time for us to think. Open up our eyes, open up our ears and our hearts. And Father, we ask you to fill us, to, to, to speak to us through the Holy Spirit, that we might understand things like we have never understood them before, like we might get clarity, Father, like we've never had it before. I, I think of when I stand before you, the, the clearness, the understanding that we will have will be beyond comprehension. It will be beyond the world that you have created for us here because it's no longer the world that you created for us. It has fallen. We have fallen. We have, yeah, we look forward, Father, to standing in your presence. Until then, you walk with us. You bring us here each week. We hear a word from you in our small groups, and in here we sing to you. And, Father, we want it to change it. So when we go out these doors, that we have new armament, that we have a new a faith, a, a, an, an increased uh, understanding of who you are and what you want from us. Father, we ask for that today. We ask for that right this moment. In Christ we pray. Amen. We're in the book of James. We've been going through it uh, for, for a good while now. We're going to be closing in on the finish in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to miss it. Man, when you read James, when you understand what James is saying, this is, this is the, the brother of Jesus. This is a half-brother of Jesus. This is somebody who has walked with him when he was a, a child and saw Jesus in, in his fullness, come into his fullness. From him, J James being a little boy around his big brother and, and then seeing what he did and what he said and how he behaved and how he interacted when people interacted with him. And then when he went on to be, when, to, when he went to show his ministry, and James watched that too. And they tried to get him out of it. It says they went to places and they said, Jesus, come home with us. Come home with us. And they were with his mother, Mary. And they were saying, come home. And he goes, you don't understand what I'm doing. You don't understand. But he knew that they would. He knew that in time that they would. And so he has prepared them. And he has prepared James. And he's preparing us to live in a world that requires an understanding of who God is and who we are in Christ. Because that's all that matters. James, chapter 5, starting in verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it, until he gets the early and the late rains. You too, be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brethren, against one another that yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. As an example, brethren, of suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke the name of the Lord. Behold, we count those blessed who endured. You have heard of the endurance of Job, 
And you have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings, that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. When it starts out, it says, be patient, therefore. You know, they say, if you find a therefore, you need to know why, what it's there for. So we kind of have to back up. And the beauty about going through the book of James, and we don't always go through a book of the Bible. Oftentimes we do other things and we're going into something uh, else. As soon as we're finished with this, I hope it's useful. But when it, you see therefore, it's, a, it's, it's going back. It's saying, wait a minute, you know what? Because what, this was a letter, right? It was written for people to read and, to, and they just ingested it. Boy, they'd come in, we got a letter from James. We got a letter from James. And everybody'd sit around and they'd read it through. They wouldn't say, okay, that's enough for today. Let's go ahead and go watch the ball game or do whatever. And we'll come back next week. And no, man, they read the letter. Can you imagine uh, being in war, uh, being uh, away from loved ones? Could you imagine being in a place where you're detached from everybody and getting a letter from them and saying, you know, I'll read the rest of it later. Dear son or whatever. I'll catch up with the rest of that later. Doubtful. Doubtful. When they read this, they read it all the way through. So when he's saying, be patient, therefore, he's talking about it's, life is difficult. Life's not going to be easy. In, in, in verses 1 through 5 of chapter 5, it says, come, come now, you know, uh, life is difficult. You know, people are going to make it hard on you. Uh, there's folks that have a lot of stuff, and they're not willing sometimes to part with it, and they don't see the need, and, and that's okay. Their, their, their eyes will be open. The Lord will open their eyes. And, and he says, but, you know, you, just, you need to face up to evil. Okay? You need to face up to wrongdoing. You need to face up in your life that things aren't going to go the way that you want them to go all the time. Things are not going to be laid out in front of you just to come up and pick up like man on the ground where you just go through there and you pick it up. No, it's going to be difficult. And it says to be patient because the Lord of the true harvest is preparing your heart. The Lord of the true harvest, not of the harvest of the field. I love harvesting. I love to watch fields. I love to... Ukraine that's under war right now, I think, supplies the second greatest amount of grains in the world. Am I right, Paul? You would know. Yeah? Okay. Paul just was in Ukraine when the war started. I'm glad to have you back. Love to see fields. Love to be around it. I had people on both sides of my family that were farmers and ranchers, and I love to see a field. But when the harvest comes in, okay? That's the thing. You have worried so much about everything. Am I going to get enough rain? Am I going to get enough sunlight? Am I going to get anything and everything you need? You want the harvest. But you know what? When it talked earlier about in verse, well, I'm going to go back to verse uh, 4 of chapter 5. And it says, Pay the laborers who mowed your fields and, who with, and you've withheld the money against them and the outcry of those who did the harvesting and reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. Uh, Sabaoth, it's the hosts. But the, he's saying now, let me, I, I said, you know, sometimes people withhold from the harvesters. They withhold from the people that do the work. They withhold what's due, folks, and everything else. But look, you're those people. You're like the farmer. We are like the farmer in the field. And we go out there, and we're oftentimes sharecroppers. We, we, we do it on the shares. I know I've, I've probably got family that were sharecroppers. Many of you had family that were sharecroppers. And you got to get on this somebody else's land. You got to plant it. You got to see it grow. You got to worry about it. And then they came later on. It seemed they didn't do anything, and they got a share of it. And that's who we are, and we are glad to do it. Because nothing we own, God tells us that, nothing that is here is ours forever. It is here now, and like a mist, it's going to go away. And so what we do with the things that God gives us now is the most important thing. True? I agree. <laughs> I'll agree with that. But as those that do plant the harvest, you do want to see a crop. You don't want to do all that work and see no gain. You want to lay in that harvest, or lay that crop in. You want to do what it is. But you know, the harvest is the important part. That's the goal. That's the end. Now, what James is telling us is about the walk, though. He's saying, you know, you plant now and know oh, the harvest happens down then. So just go to Disneyland, right? You know any farmers that planted and then went to Disneyland for a couple of months? Not hardly. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. What they would do, they would go out in the fields. And I remember watching Many people that I knew, Pam's family, that, that grew cotton and soybeans, stuff like that in Louisiana, and they'd go out in the fields and they'd look, and how's it coming, and are we, do we have pests, and are we getting enough rain, and is, you, know, you just obsess over it, and you worry about it, and you want it to come in. We're asked to do that. 
We're asked to wait for the early and the late rains. We're asked to see God provide His provision and raining down and giving blessings to us that we are to impart on others. It just goes right through us. We, it says it in the Scriptures, it says it rains on the just and the unjust alike. Was rain a good thing back then? Oh, yeah. It was a good thing. What we do as soon as it starts raining, we get our umbrellas. We run inside or because we're, we're kind of detached from that life anymore. But what they're looking for is early rains, for the late rains. And when the late rains come, they know then comes the harvest. And that'll be like, I think, over there in December, January, something like that. And so they're anxious for that. And they're waiting for that. Who else is waiting for the harvest? The owner. The owner of the fields. The one who owns the land. The one who says, I will give you everything you need. I will give you seed. I will give you fertilizer. I will give you implements. I will give you a place to live oftentimes. I, I will do all these things for you. And what you will do for me is you will plant. And you will love. And you will care for. And you will be concerned about the, the crops. Many times as a Christ follower, I forget about the concern for the crops. Many times I think about my life and what's going on in my life and I forget kind of about what is happening with the crops. Those people around me, those that the Lord wants, God wants that none should be lost. But He wants that everybody should come to a saving understanding of who He is. And so what we do as Christ followers, we need to have our, we have to have our understanding set. Yes, we have to have our, uh, uh, the ability and that's why Jesus, when He taught them how to pray and said, and thank you for our daily bread. Is because he knows we need our daily bread. But he knows also who's going to give it to us. Our Father, who art in heaven. And so if we can depend on that, if we can depend on that he cares for us, he loves us, we can do our job. We can do those things. And we can do it without concern. Now, does that mean there won't be any difficulties in life? No, James has already prepped us for this. Look, it's going to be tough. There's going to be difficulties. There's going to be things when, that you do and all, that, that are hard. But what I want you to do is it says in, in verse 8, it says, Strengthen your hearts. Strengthen your hearts. The heart to them uh, and to many uh, cultures is the center of, of, of desires. The center of understanding, the center of who you are, the center of the things that you, you want to attain, the, the, the center of the things that are important to you, the center of your feelings, of your emotion, the, the, feeling, the center of, of, of that gravitates towards the things that you desire. And he says, I need you to strengthen the, the, your hearts. And strengthening is to, this word exactly means turn resolutely into a direction. Strengthen, turn resolutely into a direction. And the way I read this is of God's will. Turn resolutely, Christ follower, turn resolutely, farmer, into what it takes in order to do what the, the owner of the fields needs, and that is to see a crop. So he says, strengthen your hearts, purpose yourself, understand who gives you all things, who can be trusted, who you can trust and obey, because really, there's no other way. Do you have to focus in on Him and God will give you the desires into your heart and a way to be able to follow Him in all the things that He wants you to do. It's astounding to me as I have gone through my Christ following life, as the sanctification process of God has walked with me and, and started out with me in, in a way and, and how he, he, he... Sometimes I was up and down in my Christianity when I was younger. You know, but then I started learning that, that we need to be consistent. We need to be followers of the Most High God in ways that will allow us to hear from Him and then to do for Him. And that's so difficult to do. I had a, a guy that worked for me one time. I'm not going to say his name because it's really hard to say to start with. No, uh, uh, but, but he's really one of the best people I ever worked around. He was one of the most talented individuals I ever, but I told him on a job, he was running the uh, Boulder water treatment plant we were building in Colorado. And I went out there one day and he had been missing for a couple of days. This guy running the job. He has all these people out there working. And so I had to send other superintendents out there. And, you know, when they're, I went out there one day, I said, Maynard, I said, you see that rock over there? I said, that's, that, that, I, it's more consistent than you are. I said, if I leave it there, it'll be out here next week when I come. You, I never know where you're going to be. Uh, you're the best, almost one of the best I've ever seen at doing what you do. He was super intelligent, super bright, hard worker, golden gloves boxer. I mean, he was something else. He was, a, he was an animal. But he was inconsistent. He was up and he was down. He was up and he was down. And, and you know, I can't, you know. 
And sometimes I think God looks at us and he says, you know what? I will offer you everything you need to be at peace. I will offer everything you need to be strong and to be strengthened. And I will open your, I will take the scales off your eyes and I will show you the direction that I want you to go. But you're going to have to be a participant. I'm not just going to load you in the truck and then drive you around everywhere as you need to be. What you need to do is you need to take a little bit of ownership. You need to be the kind of person that says, you know what, I want to be all things that God wants me to be, which means I may need to suffer some. That may mean I need, may need to give up a few things in my life. I may need to turn away from some of the things that bring me great joy, but you know, whenever I start looking at them, they, they're, they're temporal. They, they'll come to an end. And there's eternal things that I've been neglecting. And so God tells us, focus on me, because, what, because he's eternal. God cares about the little things that happen to us day in, day out. He does. God cares. I see that in so many people's lives. In my life, God cares about it. But I'm going to tell you what, he's a big picture God too. He's an, he's an eternal God. He, he's a God that knows, that cares about the little things, but he knows and he cares about the eternal things. And he calls us to walk with him in that relationship. An eternal relationship, not one that's based on the moment, on the stock markets, on anything else. And, and boy, I tell you, I, I, when I was younger, not too many years ago, I'd watch the markets every day. It's going up, it's going down, it's going. And my dad gave me some good wisdom one day. He said, you've not lost anything until you sell it, right? You had not lost a thing until you sell it. Well, look, we had not lost a thing on this earth. Because anything we could buy, sell, trade, do whatever it is, 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 is it's economical, it's whatever, you know what? But what's eternal is intangible. What's eternal is what God calls us to. How much do you love your parents? How much do you love your wife? How much do you love your kids? How much do you love your brother or sister? It's intangible. Weigh it up. You can't do it. The most important things in this world are intangible. The crops that these people that, that James is referring to here are the souls of mankind. The, the spirit of, of, of God wants to indwell them and give them an eternal guarantee, an eternal hope that they will walk with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's important. All this other stuff is just going to fade away. But what happens is sometimes we, we, we get at odds with each other. Sometimes we, we have differences of opinion about certain things. I mean, oh, gee, I don't know what, maybe politics or I don't know what, you name a few things, I don't know. And sometimes we get at odds with each other here. And then it tells us in verse 9, it says, look, do not complain, brethren, one against another, that you yourselves might not be judged Behold, the judge is standing at the door. And he's saying, you know, I realize things can get bad. I remember I took psychology when I was going to Lamar University in Beaumont, Texas. And I took psychology. Uh, they, they showed us a film. And they took these electrodes or something, and they stuck it in a mouse or a rat's brain. And, and in this particular one, they did a lot with a lot of other things. But in this particular one, they had two rats in there. And they would shock them. And they would shock them. And they would just both go to the corners and they'd go run around whenever they'd shock them. Sounds cruel, doesn't it? Sorry uh, if you're, you know, PETA people. Um, but they'd go to the corners and they were just all, and then after a while, you know what they did? <coughs> they attacked each other. They clashed. I've talked to people all over this country. I've literally talked to people from all over this world. You know what's gone on during the pandemic? A lot of clashing. A lot of people who would normally have been kindred spirits in politics or, or kindred spirits in, in, in medical understandings, it, boom, just clashing. I don't know that it's not God's will that we're clashing. How else do you figure out what's important? If you can just get in the boat and cruise down the river, that's okay. But when you start hitting rapids, whenever you start hitting places, I told you all before, I, I floated the Nile River one time, and I said it was a once-in-a-lifetime experience because I'll never do that again. But we, we need to know that, that life, um, life can get difficult. We can't take it out on each other. What we've got to do is we have to strengthen our hearts. 
And we have to allow other people to strengthen their hearts. In, in other words, if we're, if we're backbiting or we're, we're, we're going after them or whatever, and look, I've done it before. I've done it. I'm, you, you know, guys, you know me. I say this all the time. It goes through me before it comes out and goes to you. So I've done this so many times before, and just backbiting and just tearing other people up. We can't do it. What we're supposed to be doing is building each other up, encouraging, building up the body, the body of believers that, that come in here and they get refueled and they get refitted and, they, and we... we, we We rethink, and as we sing these songs about trust and obey that we do, and that our our hands will become weary, and and it will become difficult, but we're we're to push on, because the Lord says, push on, because I will give you the strength that you need, and when you you trust in me, and you open your eyes, and you, you see, you look for me, and you knock, I'll be standing there, and I will purpose you, I will push you forward. I will help you and encourage you and provision you and giving all the things that you need. I'll give you, I'll plant seed with you. I will give you fertilizer. I will give you the implements that you need. I will give you a mind. I will give you gifts untold, but you have to pour them out for me because what's important to me, God says, is those. So outside of this roof right here and outside of these walls right here are people that God loves. And gave himself for. He hung on a cross. We're talking about suffering here, people. We're talking about suffering here. And Jesus in the Old Testament, before he ever walked on this earth as Jesus the Christ, as Jesus of Nazareth, he was called the suffering servant. And it talked about him. That he was a broken reed. And he was, it, was, it was difficult. But we, it was, a, it was a, a looking forward to. It was foreshadowing about who Christ would be for us. A suffering servant. God made manifest on earth. Come down to dwell among men. And as John wrote, and our hands have held him and our eyes beheld him. We have heard the words of life. And then he was taken from them. The innocent one. The most innocent one. We worry about our suffering. We worry about our pains. We worry about our afflictions. He came to be afflicted. He came to suffer pain. He came to hang on a cross for us, for you and I, to be the ultimate goal of buying back, redeeming the world that He created. He was not going to leave us alone. He was not going to leave us here to suffer forever and ever and ever. He was coming back and returning for us. And He's told us He's going to do that again. And we long for that day. And we look for Him. But you know what? Between now and then, it could be difficult. So we need to set our face to the wind. We need to run to the shot. We need to be the church that Christ has died for. We need to see the redemption of man. And it's going to be hard. A poem. I told you guys I had a poem for you today. This poem is by Hamlin Garland. It's meant a lot to me in my life. Do you fear the force of the winds? Go face them and fight them. Be savage again. Go hungry and cold like the wolf. Go wade like the crane. The palms of your hands will thicken. The skin on your cheek will tan. You'll grow rugged and weary and swarthy, but you'll walk like a man. That's what God's calling He's saying, don't you miss it? When you were first a Christ follower and you were filled with the Spirit of God and, and, and everything else seemed to take, it's like your first love or something. It's like everything else didn't matter. And God came into your life and He became first and foremost into your life. And for some of us, it, it was a long process, but we felt it and we saw it. And then and, and we grew to love Him and to understand Him better. And He says, it's going to be difficult. But I'm going to be with you. No matter what you have to go through, I'm going to be with you. And I'm going to bring the things that you need in order to accomplish. I'm going to bring the early rains. And we long for those rains, don't we? We ask God over and over in our lives, God, rain down on me. Let me feel your presence. And especially when we have loved ones that are ill or loved ones that are going through various trials and tribulations, we say, God, rain down on me again. Help me to, to see you at work Please help them, heal them. Please walk with them. Let them feel your presence. We need that. That's the rain. And, and God promises them the rain. And we as the farmers, we as the, 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 har- the, the, the people who plant, we are the ones that are looking for that, that, that ultimate harvestor, Jesus Christ, of the souls that, that He is going to come and redeem. We want to work with Him. And we want to be part and parcel 
of the eternal, not the temporal, but the eternal orchestra that God is preparing. I can't wait for that day because the outcome, the goal, the harvest, <laughs> wow. It's a picture of Christ. All this that we've been talking about, all this about difficulty and, 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 and people not caring for you or, or people being difficult towards you. What did they say about Jesus? What did Jesus say about himself? They hated me. They're going to hate you as well. They made my life difficult. And I go to prepare a place for you, though, because Jesus said, I have come and I've done everything I need to do for the Father. And the Father calls me back. And so, of course, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are, are, are three in one. He's calling me back to be with Him. But one day, but one day I will return. And on that day, we look forward to that as Christ followers. But we really forget about it, too. And a lot of people did. Paul addressed that in many different ways in his writings. He, he said, that, you know, you, you don't just stand up there on your rooftop and go, Here I am, Lord. Come get me. There's work to be done. There's work to be done spiritually, and there's work to be done physically. He's, he's telling us that, yes, I, I will give you provision, but you know what? This is going to be a long slog sometimes. Sometimes it's going to be a long one. We've seen people that it was a short one for them, but yet we remember. And, and that's what he talks about here. He, he, he talks about the, the, the uh, prophets he said in verse 10, he says, An example, brethren, of suffering and patience. Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we count those blessed who endured. You have heard of the endurance of Job. Boy, that's a good one, isn't it? You want to have something fun? We're going to go through Job one day. I don't know when, but we're going to go through Job one day because that is one of the most amazing stories we can ever understand. One of the most amazing, God-honoring. He suffered. He suffered. But it finishes, it says, remember, Job, you have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings, that the Lord is full of compassion and the Lord is full of mercy. When Christ comes back, we are going to see the manifestation of his promises to us. When the Lord comes back, we're going to see the manifestation of those works that were placed in front of us that seemed inconsequential at the time, but may have had eternal ramifications. And it's not up to us to decide which is which. It's not up to us to decide and say, well, today I think, oh, man, this, this guy or this gal or this, you know, I might talk to them. No, I won't. It. No. It said, don't judge each other because where's the judge? He's standing at the door. The true judge. It's not up to us to judge. We're not the lawyer. He talked about that earlier. He talked about, uh, about the lawgiver. When was that? We already plowed through this. By the way, James does repeat himself, so I don't feel so bad about repeating myself sometimes. Uh, he said, uh, so to speak, in verse uh, chapter 2, I think it's verse 12, so speak and act as those who are judged by the law of liberty, for judgment will be merciless for the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. He tells us not to be judges. He tells us to wait for judgment. We are not going to be judged and found guilty that are in Christ. Because in Christ, we have the righteousness of the ages. In Christ, we have the righteousness of eternity. In Christ, the harvest is important. In Christ, your lives are important right now. The things at your hands, what, what are in your hands, are important. We can't overlook them. So I just want to say, Strengthen your hearts, folks, because the Lord is coming. Strengthen your hearts because the Lord is at the door. Strengthen your hearts because that means that you're going to purpose yourself and direct yourself in the will of the Lord. And in doing so, you'll be working with the Lord. Wow. You talk about co-workers. I talked about a co-worker earlier. Man, I think working with Jesus is a really good thing because... Well, I'll let you fill in the blanks. Working with Jesus is a really good thing, folks. He cares. He knows. He's got the power. He's got the love. He's got the judgment. He's got the whole world in his hands. I don't know. <laughs> He's got eternity in his hands, folks. And that's beautiful. Again, if eternity is eternity, it's already started for those that are in Christ, hasn't it? Yeah. Blow your mind. Father, I thank you so much for what you've done for us. It's amazing that you would take uh, the crumbs from the table, 
like us and that you would uh, use us to feed the people in our community, that, Father, that what you feed us is so potent and so plentiful that we are able to give out. So, Father, I just pray that you would help us to see our lives clearly and in perspective. Help us not to 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 think too highly of ourselves, but, Father, don't let us think too lowly of ourselves. We are called by you to be your hands and feet. We are called by you to proclaim the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Wow. It's in his name that we pray today. Amen. Uh, Be dismissed. will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our Lord, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. Wow. God bless you all this week. I hope and pray that you're looking for ways and opportunities to serve your Lord. If I can be, and I say this every week, if I can be any of assistance to you, if you're struggling with things and you just need somebody to talk to, if you're, if you're made decisions about things and you want to talk to I'm, I'm here. I am present. I'm available. Our Father, it's most important between you and Him. True? But I'm going to tell you what. Uh, I would joy in hearing the things that are going on in your life, even the struggles, because through struggles, what does it say? In the very beginning of James, count it all joy. Those trials, those testings, build your endurance. Same word that we were talking about today. God bless you all. Have a great week. Man, I'm telling you guys, thank you so much again today. Take us out, Justin.